top 10 peer review Q&As for NIH applicants. You need to know a lot to successfully navigate NIH peer review and get a grant. So we've gathered 10 experts from the NIH Center for Scientific Review to answer the top 10 questions about NIH peer review, plus a bonus question at the end. Let's start with number 10. How do I withdraw my application? The senior official at your institution can now request withdraw of an application directly through ERA comments. See NH get notice NOT OD 16 143 for instructions. Alternatively, a letter with the ink signature from your senior official can be sent to CSR DRR at mail.nh.gov and we will process your request manually. Number nine. What do you mean by scientific premise or rigor? I'm confused about the terms and how they are different from significance. Can you tell me what reviewers are supposed to be looking for? The NIH is moving away from the term scientific premise for applications that come in for due dates of January 25, 2019 and beyond. In evaluating these applications, reviewers still would be asked whether the prior research that serves as the key support for the proposed project is rigorous. Scientific premise or rigor is just part of the consideration of significance, which includes consideration of the importance of the problem, critical barriers to progress, how the proposed project will improve scientific knowledge, and how the field will change should the aims be achieved. Number eight. What is the difference between significance and overall impact? Significance is a standalone assessment of the project's goals in the context of the relevant field and to a large extent assumes that the investigator's approach and environment are adequate to allow for successful completion of the aims of the project, even if later discussion of each of these review criteria will identify problems. When reviewers assess the overall impact of an application, they are expected to take into account the scored review criteria. For example, significance, investigators, innovation, approach, and environment. And the additional review criteria to judge the potential of the project to exert a sustained, powerful influence on the field. For more information, visit the Overall Impact versus Significance document at csr.nih.gov slash impact and sig. Number seven, I'm a reviewer. Can I submit my application late? Most funding opportunity announcements, or FOAs, have a two-week late window of consideration, during which time an application can be submitted late. However, the terms are very specific and don't apply to some requests for applications, or RFAs. Examples of reasons why late applications might be accepted include review service, illness, natural disasters, etc. However, no advance permissions can be given for late applications. You should list your reasons in the cover letter with your application, and the decision will be made on a case-by-case -case basis. You should read the NIH late policy in the NIH guide notice NOT-OD-15-039 for explanation of how the policy may apply to you. In addition, some reviewers have a continuous submission eligibility because they are appointed to an NIH review group, such as a study section, or institute advisory council, or have a recent substantial service. Under continuous submission, these reviewers may submit R01, R21, and R34 applications with the standard due dates at any time during the council round. Read the NIH continuous submission policy in both NOT-OD-17-042 and NOT-OD-18-178 if this policy applies to you. Number six. Must I wait for my summary statement before submitting my idea again? Yes, once your application has been reviewed, you must wait for the summary statement before you resubmit that application or any other application with substantial scientific overlap. Number five, 
When will I receive word on my application? Notification that CSR has assigned your application to a scientific review group and institute should appear in your ERA Commons account within two weeks of the submission deadline. If this notification does not appear in this time frame, please contact CSR's Division of Receipt and Referral at csrdrr at mail.nih.gov or at 301-435-0715. After the review, your score should appear in your Commons account within three business days and your summary statement within 30 days. It is important to note that funding decisions are not made until after the relevant institute or center council makes its recommendations. Number four, how do you guard against a single reviewer having undue influence at the review? Before the review meeting, the Scientific Review Officer, or SRO, looks for instances where one reviewer's scores or critiques are out of sync with the others. The SRO will notify the chair and assign reviewers when this happens. If the differences are not resolved before the meeting, the chair will make sure the study section discusses them to see if they are well-founded or not. Also, if a review discussion is one-sided, chairs are trained to ask questions and encourage other reviewers to join the discussion. It is important to note that reviewers take their jobs seriously and they routinely question each other when they feel a review is not balanced. In addition, all the reviewers in the room weigh what is said at the meeting and independently score the application. Finally, the SRO monitors the review meeting to ensure it is fair and unbiased. If it appears a reviewer is not meeting this standard, the SRO can pause the meeting to talk to the reviewer, conduct a re-review of the application at a later time, or take other appropriate actions. Number three. I don't like the review group you put my application into. What can I do? Contact the chief of the integrated review group for the assigned study section. He or she will be able to explain to you why the assigned study section is the best fit for your application. CSR listens to PIs and considers their preferences in making application assignments. When you submit your application, you may, but need not, Use the assignment request form to suggest up to three study sections. Helpful resources for finding a CSR study section are the study section guidelines and the assisted referral tool. You can find both on our webpage, csr.nih.gov. <clears throat> you can also use the assignment request form in your application to tell us the types of expertise needed to appropriately review your grant application. You should not request specific individuals. In addition, you can use this form to identify individuals who may be in conflict with your application. NIH will evaluate the situation according to our conflict of interest standards. See the NIH conflict of interest page, grants.nih.gov slash grants slash policy slash COI. Please note that being competitors is not a compelling reason. If you suggest one or more study sections and we can find a good fit among them, we will assign the application there. If our referral professionals judge the fit to be poor, they work to find an appropriate alternative. Our paramount concern is having appropriate expertise on the panel where the application is reviewed. If you don't understand, ask. In the great majority of cases, PI concerns about application assignments are resolved through communication. Number two, I addressed the concerns from the prior critiques and my score got worse. Why? Each time your application is submitted, it competes within a new set of applications and it may be reviewed by new reviewers or one or more of the original reviewers may see new concerns. So there is no guarantee your score will improve. The best course of action is to discuss your review concerns with your program officer before you resubmit and then be as responsive as possible to them. Including additional data, if available, could be helpful. In any event, if issues with significance and overall impact remain, 
then addressing methodological concerns will not very likely improve the score. Number one, what are the biggest problems reviewers find in applications? Here is a list of the most frequent problems reviewers cite when they critique grant applications. Lack of new or original ideas, absence of an acceptable scientific rationale, lack of experience in the essential methodology, questionable reasoning in experimental approach, uncritical approach, diffuse, superficial, or unfocused research plan, lack of sufficient experimental detail, lack of knowledge of published relevant work, unrealistically large amount of work proposed, or uncertainty concerning future directions. For more insight, check out the reviewer tips for applicants in our Insider Guide to NIH Peer Review at csr.nih.gov slash applicant resources slash insider. Chances are you'll have other questions. We've posted over a hundred frequently asked questions about NIH peer review for you on the NIH Center for Scientific Review website, www.csr.nih.gov FAQ. You'll also find a wealth of information on the NIH Office of Extramural Research webpage, www.grants.nih.gov. If you have general questions about NIH grants and review, you can also contact GrantsInfo at grantsinfo at nih.gov or phone 301-435-0714. But if you have more specific questions, here is some helpful guidance. Before you submit your application, contact a program officer at an NIH institute or center, or contact a scientific review officer. After you submit, contact your assigned scientific review officer. After your review, contact your assigned program officer. Here's the bonus question. How can I find a program officer or scientific review officer to answer questions before submitting my application? Before you submit your application, program officers or POs can identify the right type of grant program and our funding opportunity for you and your research and verify that your idea fits within the mission and priorities of an NIH institute or center. POs also can refer you to appropriate scientific review officers or study sections. To find a PO or an NIH institute or center that might fund your research, Go to the Matchmaker tool in NIH's Reporter Database at projectreporter.nih.gov and click on the Find Program Officials tab. If you wish to find an SRO or study section at CSR, you can search study section descriptions or use the Assisted Referral tool on CSR's homepage, csr.nih.gov. After you submit your application, your assigned program officer and SRO will be listed in your ERA Commons account. For more guidance, visit the Contact NIH staff page at csr.nih.gov slash NIH contacts. We hope you found this information helpful and wish you well as you advance your application.